I cannot walk into an organization and change the energy personally. I have to work with the organization to go, how in the world did it get like this in the first place and how are we going to change it? I try to liken it. Imagine this summer you and your family are going on a long drive down to Florida. You're going to load everybody up into the station wagon. You put in the camping gear and you put in the cooler and you've got it loaded with videos and your portable DVD player. You've loaded it to the gills and you're now ready to go and you finally got the whole family out there and you go to turn on the car. Nowhere. You're going nowhere. Everybody piles out of the car and you've got a dead battery. And guess what? Do you then go and say, well, we're having a problem with the energy here. Maybe I need to put in another cooler. <laughs> now, some of you actually might say that. Say, I'll just go spend the summer vacation in the back seat with the cooler. You don't sit there and go, maybe we need more camping gear. You don't say, maybe we need to get an extra DVD or two for the kids. What you say is, if we don't get the energy working, we're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter about all the other stuff. I am at my happiest right now, and you know why? Because I'm in a room with a thousand people who all have energy that is going in the same direction. You are going to leave this event, you are going to get in your cars or on a plane, and you are going to go home, and how many people in your work environment are going to give you this level of energy? Folks, that's when the real work begins. You right now are a station wagon loaded to the gills <laughs> with camping equipment and coolers and DVDs, and you are going to go home all pumped up and excited, and guess what? You're going to go into an environment, and somebody's going to try to rip that battery right out of the front of that car. And what I want to talk to you about today is how do we create an environment where everybody's on our side? Because guess what? We're doing the right thing. And if we've got people fighting it, then I think we've got an energy problem. I think we've got a passion problem. I think we've got a focus problem. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How many times have you walked into a funeral, people are sitting around, and you walk up to them and you go, come on, lighten up. <laughs> That would be the absence of an energy audit. <laughs> an energy audit tells you where people are at. When I walk into a room, I'm doing energy audits. I was doing a program for a power company up in northern Minnesota. And the management team had decided unilaterally, which happens a lot with management teams, they had decided unilaterally that they were going to change the menu of the, the types of treats they had for folks when they arrived for the training. So they went from high-fat donuts and, and rolls and all of these things and coffee, high-octane coffee, to carrots and celery and juices. They decided to unilaterally do that when I was starting my first programs with the employees. So when I walk into a room, I want to do an energy audit. I want to see what kind of class I'm going to have today. So what did I do? I walked into the room. I don't hear anybody talking. There's 100 people in this room. They're all employees. They all know each other. Nobody's talking. That's not a good sign. I see a guy standing up against the wall in the back. He's like this. He's eating a carrot. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I walk up to him and I said, uh, and he doesn't know who I am. I said, how are you doing? He said, how do you think I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing not, not real good. <laughs> I said, what's, what's up? He goes, uh, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm eating a carrot. <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, does it look like a donut to you? <laughs> and, and with that unilateral decision on management's part, and their heart was in the right place, they were being a leader. They were saying, let's, let's modify the diet a little bit. Let's help people lose some weight or be healthy or whatever. But the way in which the decision was made absolutely sucked the energy out of the equation. Here's my last story I want to leave you with. We got any cat lovers in here? Okay, it's not a dangerous amount, so I can go ahead and tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> this is for visual purposes only. I'm not saying do it, but this is for visual purposes. Walk up to an old, old cat sound asleep, curl up in a ball, old cat, grab it by the scruff of the neck, toss it up in the air. This is a great room for that. <laughs> Typically, how do they land? 
on their feet, midair. They're like, foom, 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 bam. We're like amazed. We're thinking, how in the world can an old, old cat still do that? And the reason that an old, old cat can still do that is because every single day of its life, it lays there imagining that at any moment, <laughs> right? <laughs> Some crazy human being is going to test that theory. So what does it spend the day doing? Probably going to need one of these. Probably going to need one of these. This is what I want to leave you with. You are leaders. What do you need? Go get it. It's not just going to come from you. It's going to come from everybody else around you that you are trying to influence. Go after the energy. Get the pats on the back that you need to keep your energy going, and it will go a long way, not towards just safety, towards every aspect of your organization and every aspect of your life. The thing that I love about safety is it's absolutely entirely about energy. It is absolutely and entirely about energy. I was doing a class a couple of weeks ago in Tucson, Arizona for a contractor. Last year, they had an all-employee meeting that they brought 375 of their hourly employees to, field, field workers, 375 employees. They fed them. They did whatever. When I got there two weeks ago to do the, to do the class, you know how many contractors there were there? 150. They had lost 225 people due to the economy. I went up to the president of the company who was there, and I said, wow, did you ever consider, like, not doing this? He said, why? Why would I consider not doing it? I said, well, you know, with the economy and everything, he goes, well, how does the economy change the value of our employees that are here? There's no relationship there. And I work with a lot of companies where it's going, well, we'd love to do more for safety, but guess what? Funding is down. How many of you are sitting there budgeting the safety program for your kids? You know, Billy would really love to tell you to wear your helmet, but it's not been a good week for Dad. And so, I mean, that's not how it works. So if, if, even if budgets are tighter, guess what? Guess what is available potentially in abundance is energy. And if you think about it, you talk to anybody who's gone through a crisis, what was typically the one thing that showed itself in abundance? When they're interviewing on people on TV, oh man, we had this flood or this fire or whatever, but look what happened. The neighbors came over and the Red Cross came in. And I'm thinking, where'd all that energy come from? I mean, I don't want us all to go, you know what, if we really need to enlist people's support, we need a crisis. It's a very expensive and timely and painful way to invite energy. So what I'm talking about today is how do you go after the energy in a positive way? I'm here saying, I'm going to lay out for you an invitation. And the invitation is, when you interact with people and you ask more from them in the area of safety or productivity or quality, is it feasible that you could do it in a way where they walk away going, that was good. That was a good interaction. Thank you. That was valuable. Versus walking away going, you know, whatever the words are, people say when they turn around and walk away. Because the bottom line is, what are we doing in the area of safety? You know what it is? It's an invitation. I can say to you, you know what? Any of you that want to stand, feel free. If you want to stand, you want to move, feel free. That was powerful, wasn't it? <laughs> it's not strong enough. It's not strong enough. When I'm in a classroom and I say to all the employees, I said, look, if anybody in this room wants to stand, feel free, nobody moves. Then I said, you know what? Enough of that. You guys are tired. Everybody stand up. You know what happens? The first thing people do when I ask them to stand is the first thing they do is they do the microsecond scan of the room. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be the first person to stand. But guess what? If Larry stands, I'm up. Why? Because Larry is the one that controls the energy of this group. And if Larry doesn't stand, I'm not standing. It's not going to happen. Why? Because then Larry's energy is going to turn on me if I'm the only one that's standing. Energy is all around us. The question is, how do we drive it in a positive way? I'm not saying we should quit talking about it, but, but why are we talking about it? I mean, you can go out and buy a poster right now that says smoking is not good for you. And my question is, who's going to read that and be surprised? Oh, not good for you. Okay, well, that changes. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm not <laughs> it's deeply addictive in the brain and in the body, and it's not a lack of information thing. I'm probably the only person in this room right now that knows why there aren't more people eating a balanced diet. I'm the only one that knows. We have an acute shortage of pyramid posters. <laughs> right? 
I watched people eating in the cafeteria yesterday. I do not blame them at all for what they ate. I did not see one pyramid poster. So how are people to know? You know how smart you are. You walk into a buffet and you're going, nah, I shouldn't be having this. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be having this. That, that's a good thing they got the pyramid poster so I at least know what's going to kill me. It's, and, and again, I apologize for my sarcasm, but I think in the area of safety, we got so much room for it. We, we do not do safety anywhere close to the way we typically do other aspects of a business. We do, we do the leading indicators for all kinds of production and customer service and whatever, and we trend to do still the trailing indicators of did we have a safe day? How do you know that at any facility you've got anywhere in the country or in the world, how do you know that it was a safe day for employees? Nobody got hurt. Is it quite possible everyone was lucky? You would measure that. You would go, this was a terrible day for us. Sure, nobody got hurt, but look at all the stupid things that people were doing. No, we're going, hey, you guys did great. Matter of fact, we're going to have a banquet. <laughs> and we're going to celebrate our luckiness. And, <laughs> and we're going to continue to drive that luckiness behavior. So, all right, that being said, everybody stand up for a second, please. All right. Are you doing okay so far? You can handle this? All right, good. I just wanted to have a little oxygen in your brain as I started heading into the energy sources. Anybody got any comments or questions so far? Anything? It does not make it longer. <laughs> Seriously, people go, don't, don't ask him, because I've seen him. He, he'll answer for like 45 minutes. Anybody got any comments or questions? All right, just do a nice, simple stretch of your choice, whatever you need. Take a nice, deep breath. Get some oxygen going through the body a little bit. Okay, good. And you can go ahead and sit back down. All right. These are what I call my life-saving energy sources. And the reason that I say that is that I was a deliverer of information for years. And organizations would call me and they'd go, Michael, it's not working. I'm like, what? They go, you know that class you did on sitting? They're all sitting terribly again. I'm like, well, how good did you think I was? The people were going to walk out going, I'll be darned. I can only sit perfectly now that Michael was here and all those habits I had for 35 years are gone. These energy sources are what drive our behaviors in my perspective and, and I'm going to show you real quickly how I try to include these in what I'm doing. Things like commitment. Let me ask you a very honest question. Not to embarrass anybody, but has Marathon Oil ever started and then stopped a program? <laughs> and people go, you mean today? <laughs> Here's the issue with it. I want you to put yourself in the place of the receiver of the program. When you're sitting there as an employee and somebody gets up and goes, hey, we got this new thing we're introducing, and they're going, oh, I was just getting used to last year's. Thing. Oh, no, this one. This one is going to be good. Here's the problem. They're going, you know what? I think I'll wait and see if it's around for a little while, and if it is, I'll get on board. And, and then we're upset that they're not grateful and thanking us and whatever.